few different definitions of toxic masculinity in different fields. Uh, in psychological science, how we define toxic masculinity uh, tends to focus on uh, the primary component of this very unhealthy and pathological obsession with competition and winning. So this drive for dominance and power, particularly at the expense of others. So this would be differentiated from like a motivation to do really well and to succeed. That's not toxic masculinity. Um, wanting to do well and, and do good at your job and do well in things you're interested in is not toxic. Uh, what's toxic is when the drive um, becomes so strong that you're willing to throw anybody else under the bus to get to it, um, and you're willing to sort of deride others and lose relationships, and it becomes the central thing in a person's life. Um, it's also typically associated in psychological science with uh, misogyny and homophobia in particular. Uh, women and uh, gay men or effeminacy and heterosexual or uh, non-gay men uh, in general also tend to be targets of toxic masculinity. Those are groups that people who are higher in toxic masculinity would see as potential um, uh, sources to disparage, to lift themselves up. It could easily extend into things like racism, although that's somewhat socially less acceptable to express um, and could lead to problems in like workplaces, whereas uh, sexist comments against women um, might be more easily tolerated um, than openly racist comments in some workplaces. Mm -hmm. So it can depend on some context, the exact manifestations of toxic masculinity. Um, toxic masculinity is also tied very closely to another important concept in the psychology of men and masculinity called precarious manhood, which is this idea that um, men very often see masculinity not as an intrinsic trait in themselves, as femininity is often seen, but rather um, a thing that has to be earned and maintained. Uh, so. Uh, young men talk about this sometimes if they talk about their man card or man points. Mm -hmm. So if you hold your girlfriend's purse when she go, goes into Victoria's Secret, you're losing your man card because you're holding a purse and that's supposed to be bad. And you're supposed to do something to get your man card back. It turns out that's actually a thing in psychological science and we can pretty easily manipulate it. Um, if we bring people into research labs and have them do tasks that they think are effeminate, mm -hmm. so like braiding a mannequin's hair, for example, rather than doing a, uh, something with a piece of rope, mm -hmm. um, those are two different tasks we might use. Um, or I give false feedback on personality tests and tell people they scored at the low end of masculine. We'll find that people will react to that very heavily. So in one recent experiment I did, uh, I, people were using my pain machine, which essentially uh, inflicts blunt force on a finger, the crushing force. That's not going to break anybody's finger or anything like that. Um, but it will cause pain. And people who we said weren't masculine on the test were willing to endure a significantly more uh, amount of force applied to their finger, with the only difference being that we told them they weren't masculine. Um, and this is a very popular research paradigm that's been replicated in other work. So, for example, it increases negative attitudes toward women and gay men. It even increases negative attitudes toward immigrants or other people seen as an outgroup. Um, and some of my other research, we found that it um, promoted people making riskier financial decisions um, and investments. They're more likely to choose risky investments over just a normal balanced portfolio among people who did invest money um, in stocks and things like that. Um, so it's, it's a surprisingly robust effect um, that people really, that many men really do feel this um, uh, sense that their masculinity could be taken away by something. And so if you feel that, if you're in a workplace or something, and you feel that you aren't meeting like the standards of like the boys club or whatever the thing is, you might feel that your, your like sense of personhood in some way is being threatened because it's a thing that you can feel could be taken away from you by other people. Other people tell you you're a man and that's how you know rather than an intrinsic thing. And so if you feel that it can cause reactive things, so people might do things they're unwilling to do. A uh, sort of classic example is people continue, people who have no desire to engage in like sexist behaviors, telling and saying sexist jokes to sort of appear masculine. Um, even though they don't want to make those kind of jokes, they don't enjoy saying those kinds of things, they expect everyone else around them to expect that of them. Um, and so they continue to engage in that behavior. So people can even do it preemptively 
to so if they feel they're in a setting where their masculinity could be threatened, they might preemptively um, put on this mask to portray themselves in such a way um, that uh, others would not view them as viable targets of this like masculine threat.